Most people come to Armory Forger after seeing some videos of an epic battle, crazy one-of-a-kind scenario, or fresh new game mode and want to take part in the chaos. He's throwing yellow snow! Watch out! They download the game, fire it up, and are met with dozens of pages of mods on the workshop, hundreds of servers offering completely different experiences, and a strange game master mode that allows you to control everything from the top down. Is Armory Forger a first-person shooter or a real-time strategy game? Or is it both? What gives? If you're confused, then fear not. My name is Ironbeard, and in cooperation with Bohemia Interactive, this video is all about how to get the most out of Armory Forger so you can explore the depth it has to offer. But to do that, let's first go over what the core of Armory Forger actually is. At its core, Armor Reforger is the reimagining of the things we've come to know and love about the Arma series. With familiar systems designed from scratch in a new modern game engine from all the lessons learned over the last 20 years. The core pillars of the game, as envisioned by the developers who were making it, are combat, communication, and logistics. In a sea of military shooters, Armor Reforger stands out as an authentic sandbox immersing both PC and console players together for an unparalleled gaming experience, seamlessly integrating both groups into combined arms warfare. Picture epic battles sprawling across expansive landscapes where every aspect is simulated in real time. With the island of Everon coming in at 51 square kilometers, Armory Forger thrusts players into the heart of large-scale engagements where the scope of conflict is vast and the outcomes are shaped by teamwork, communication, and strategic decision-making. Each role is defined by the needs of each engagement, and you can decide how your equipment and loadouts are put together for the task at hand, which are often fluid and can change at a moment's notice. Players can also experience authentic military engagements with realistic weapon mechanics, including recoil and armor penetration, ensuring that every bullet fired adheres closely to the principles of real-world physics. Communications play a key role in Armor Reforger beyond just talking to your teammates in global chat. Communication is information, information is knowledge, and knowledge is power. Armor Reforger approaches communication in a way that immerses the player into the battlefield with the use of radio networks and proximity chat. When you speak, everyone around you can hear what you say, including nearby enemies. Your radio is how you communicate with teammates over long distances, and the frequency by which you set your radio will determine if you're speaking to your squad or speaking to a different group, such as everyone on the platoon channel. Because of this, it's important to keep vigilant about security because your enemies can listen in on your communications if they acquire one of your radios. And finally, logistics makes up the last core pillar of Armor Reforger. To quote Army General John J. Pershing of the American Expeditionary Forces in World War I, infantry wins battles, logistics wins wars. While the nature of warfare has changed, the need to keep your fighting forces well stocked with supplies and ammunition has not. In this dynamic military sandbox, where ammunition is expended rapidly, vehicles require constant repair and medical supplies are in high demand, a well-organized logistics crew becomes the backbone of success. Supply running in Armor Reforger is the lifeblood of any operation. It's not merely about delivering goods from point A to point B to fill up some arbitrary score bar with points, but about sustaining the fight and ensuring that troops are able to stay equipped with weapons, vehicles, equipment, and ammunition. Without a robust supply chain, even the most skilled combatants can find themselves at a severe disadvantage because Armor Reforger isn't about who can click on the most heads, but about who can conduct warfare more effectively, and often this means hindering your opponent's logistics chain. So with all of that said, here's how to get the most out of Armor Reforger. Whether you're a seasoned veteran of the Arma series or brand new to the franchise, the tutorial is the first place you should start because Arma Reforger makes some significant gameplay improvements over its predecessor, which we'll cover in more detail later. For now, the tutorial scenario will help you get acquainted with navigation using your compass, driving vehicles with the new physics and vehicle simulation, flying helicopters, the medical system and how to treat yourself and others, and yes, even how to fire your weapon too. 
You want to practice the basics before stepping onto the battlefield because it's easy to get overwhelmed in the chaos when bullets start flying. To access, simply start the training scenario from the scenario screen. This is where all of the scenarios you download from the workshop will be located as well. Once in the tutorial, you'll be greeted with different points of interest that will walk you through each part of the game you wish to learn. For extra reference about the game's mechanics, the field manual will explain everything in more detail. Because Armor Reforger is set during the 1980s and authentically immerses you into a physically based world without cluttered heads up displays or GPS, you'll want to get to know the map legend inside the navigation section. Trust me, you'll be using it a lot. Knowing how to navigate and read the map is one of the most important skills you can have in this game. As mentioned earlier, the moment to moment gameplay has improved quite a bit in Armor Reforger, and not many people realize that they can do certain actions not found in other games. For starters, the action menu has been redefined and interacting with objects in the world has become much more streamlined than previous titles. Now, each item has a contextual menu associated with it and you can scroll through the different actions for that particular item. For example, when gearing up at an arsenal, you can save your loadout by scrolling through the action menu and selecting the save loadout function. Other interaction points like on your vehicle have functions such as turning on your hazard lights or high beams, so on and so forth. Movement is now more fluid in Armor Reforger as well. Simply use your mouse wheel to scroll to your desired movement speed, from a slow walk to a brisk jog. And to choose your stance, hold control and scroll on your mouse wheel, or hold right stick and move the left stick on Xbox for the ability to peek or stay protected behind different heights of cover. With that said, it's important to mention that some of the controls I mentioned may change in the future, so consult the controls tab in the settings menu for the most up-to-date bindings. Switching between weapon functions and firing modes is a breeze too. For example, if you have a grenade launcher attached to your weapon, you can switch to it by holding V, which is right bumper plus A on Xbox, or activate the weapon slot again, and tapping the cycle fire modes button will sort through all the different fire modes that your weapon has to offer, if any. Some scopes, like the ART2 scope for the M21, are variable optic scopes that allow you to adjust the zoom level. To do so, simply hold ALT and mouse scroll while aiming down the sights, or D-pad left and right on Xbox. One important weapon function you'll want to pay attention to is how your weapon is zeroed. Zeroing means adjusting your sight so that your point of aim is the point of impact of the bullet at a certain distance. If it's too short, your shots may land in front of your target. If it's too long, your shots will go over your target's head. You can zero your weapon with the page up and page down keys, or D-pad up and down for Xbox. Weapon resting is also a feature brought over from Armor 3, and it allows you to stabilize your weapon on a surface to significantly reduce recoil. Almost anything can be used to rest your weapon, from the side of a fence post to the top of your buddy's egg head, which their body works great as a shield too, if I do say so myself. Are you mounted on his helmet? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Just saying. To rest your weapon, place it near the surface you want to rest it on, and if you're in an appropriate position, it'll work by pressing C, or pressing left stick on Xbox. Deploying your bipod works similarly, in that it'll reduce the recoil even further when you rest it on a surface. You can deploy bipods by pressing Ctrl plus C, or right bumper and hold A on Xbox. For communication, you'll want to get to know how to operate your radio so you can communicate with your team, other squads, and update frequencies in case the enemy has compromised your comms. As mentioned earlier, nearby enemies can hear everything you say on proximity voice chat and over your radios if they've stolen one, so you can accidentally give away your position if you're not careful. Opening up the team menu by pressing P, or menu plus right bumper on Xbox, will show you which frequencies the different squads are using. Your radio can be set to two different frequencies and switched between them. This first number is usually different for each squad and will be what you use to communicate with your own team members. The second number is usually the same frequency shared by everyone by default and will allow you to broadcast to everyone on that channel, sort of like a global chat. However, this too can be changed for obvious reasons. What's up? To do so, bring up your radio menu by pressing G, or left bumper plus X on Xbox. Here you can select which radio frequency to use and even turn your radio off entirely. To change the frequency dial, use the mouse wheel or D-pad up and down on Xbox. 
And finally, map markers are an important nonverbal communication tool used to inform the rest of your team of tactical maneuvers you intend on making or enemy positions you've spotted. There's many predefined icons you can place down for each faction in a pinch, as well as custom markers to relay more specific information. Whenever you get the chance, place down markers by double clicking on the map on PC or tap X on Xbox and select your desired icon with the right trigger. For custom markers, you can even make them private so only you can see them. Otherwise, the rest of your team will see which markers you place down. To delete them, hover over the marker you'd like to remove and right click or tap X on Xbox and select the remove option with the right trigger. Now that you're familiar with some of the major gameplay elements of Armor Reforger, it's time to look at the different official game modes offered. Sitting at the heart of Armor Reforger is the Conflict Game Mode, which utilizes the core pillars of combat, communication, and logistics, and a dynamic symphony of teamwork to capture the islands of Arland and Everon. In this scenario, players join either the US or USSR faction and take territory away from the FIA, a third faction who's in control of the islands. Eventually, player teams will cross paths and go head-to-head -head for control over the island and the team with the best tactics, teamwork, and logistical support will fight their way to victory. Only bases within your faction's radio range can be captured, and radio ranges are extended by building antennas at each command tent. Acts of sabotage by the enemy team can disrupt your network, hindering your ability to hold a base or even spawn into certain locations if you're not careful. Supplies are the lifeblood of your faction, which are often held by FIA supply depots scattered throughout the island or generated slowly at your faction's main operating base. They allow you to build important services like antennas so you can expand across the map, spawn vehicles, purchase weapons, respawn at bases, and more. Once you discover supplies, they can be transported inside any vehicle, including your own backpack or pockets should you want to get some exercise, and unload them at any base or service you need. The result is a mix of intense PvPVE action that spans across the entire island over many hours. See the training scenario for more information on how everything works together. Game Master, on the other hand, can be a totally different change of pace. Game Master is the spiritual successor to the Zeus Game Master DLC, which was released one year after Armor 3. Essentially, Game Master gives you top-down, real-time strategy-like control over the game world, allowing you to curate the multiplayer experience of other players. As the Game Master, you can create dynamic scenarios that are reactive based on what other players are trying to accomplish, even going so far as taking control of enemy AI and disrupting the plans of your friends. You can create your scenario to be focused on PvP against other players, PvE against AI, or even a mix of both. It's up to you, and you're given multiple assets and compositions to create your scenarios with. You can control the time and date, weather, who can spawn where, and what the objectives are. You can even save and load different types of base scenarios to host regular events for your group or friends. Alternatively, you can participate in someone else's Game Master scenario for a unique experience every time. If single player or co-op is more your thing, Combat Ops offers you a dynamic mission that never plays the same way twice with randomized mission objectives across the map. These missions range from clearing an area of enemies to destroying a certain vehicle or assassinating a particular officer. You start the scenario at a randomized location with only an arsenal and a light vehicle, and it's up to you to plan on how you're going to tackle the mission, or you could bring some friends along with drop-in, drop-out support. Once complete, your final objective is to get to a randomized extraction point with all the required gear or documents, and can usually be accomplished in between 45 minutes to one hour. In my opinion, Combat Ops offers a great training ground for practicing the skills you learn from the training scenario. Now, these were just the official scenarios. So if you want to try out more scenarios, game modes, assets, and more, then you'll want to explore the workshop. The workshop is where all the community created content is curated and downloaded. The new Armor Reforger workshop replaces the Steam workshop and enables some very important quality of life functionality, such as the ability to automatically download required mods upon joining a server, eliminating the need to search for and enable and disable them manually. This significantly streamlines joining servers with custom content allowing entire mod packs to be automatically downloaded and enabled dynamically, allowing you to go from official servers to community ones with ease. More on that in a bit. 
It also gives console users access to the same mods that are on PC, thanks to Reforger's crossplay support. Let me just pause here and emphasize what I just said. Xbox users can now officially get full access to all of the same scenarios, game modes, weapon packs, vehicles, and everything else that we PC players have been bragging about and praising throughout Arma's history. Everything great about Arma mods can now be experienced by console users at the click of a button or launch of a server. How crazy is that? Anywho. Mods can be downloaded from the workshop by subscribing to them, and you can enable and disable them via the Mod Manager tab. Updating the mods is as simple as clicking on the Update button at the top right of the screen and selecting Download All. Filters can also be enabled to help you find mods in a particular category, and you can search for mods by typing in the name of the mod you're looking for, or the mod author in the search bar. So with these game modes in mind, and all these mods in the workshop that can drastically change the gameplay, let's talk about how to put this all together and find a server for a great experience. There's generally two categories of servers, official and community. Official servers are hosted by Bohemia Interactive and offer the intended Armor Reforger experience using the assets and scenarios that were developed by them. And community servers contain everything else, which are operated by community members and other groups. They range from official gameplay scenarios and assets with just minor tweaks, such as player count or active admins, to complete overhauls. Some community servers are PvP focused with mods that make Armor Reforger more hardcore, and others are PvE focused with scenarios that have been catered to fighting against the AI. Whatever it is you're interested in, you can likely find it here. The server browser can also help you stay in touch with servers you've played on recently, so you can add them to your favorites. Simply move over to the Recently Played tab and check the star icon to add that server to your favorites. Servers containing mods can be identified by this puzzle piece icon, and clicking on it will open a window so you can get a better idea about which mods are running. The search bar is a useful tool for finding a specific server that contains keywords you're looking for, or if you're playing with a group of friends and want to make sure everyone goes to the same server. For example, all the official servers contain a numerical code within the name, and you can filter out specific servers by simply typing in the last three digits, instead of trying to find it within all the other servers. There's also filters you can enable for the server browser, which allow you to quickly find servers without battle eye enabled or crossplay servers with low ping if you're on PC and want to play with your friends who are on another platform. For servers that are hidden from the browser, you can join them directly if you know the IP address and port number. To host your own server, you can do it in two ways, self-hosted from the game client or by setting up a dedicated server using another computer. If you just want to play with some friends from time to time, it's easy to self-host a server. Simply click on the host tab, host a new server, and fill in the appropriate details. Under advanced settings, it's important to choose whether you're hosting a server on a local network, i.e. a LAN, or if you're going to open up your computer to the wider internet so friends from outside of your local network can join. If you do this, you'll want to make sure that your network has the proper port forwarding setup, otherwise your router will reject the connection. Unfortunately, the game cannot do this for you, so you'll need to research how to forward ports for your specific hardware. Armor Reforger can also be hosted on a dedicated computer in your house or a virtual machine in the cloud by running the independent server software. Again, that goes beyond the scope of this guide, so just know that options are available should you want to go this route. For more information, check out the Bohemia Interactive Community Wiki, link in the description. Once you join a server, you can see some of the stats in the top right corner, such as your ping, the server frame rate if it drops below 30 FPS, your own frames per second, and the version number of the game. Armor Reforger also comes with the workbench and opens its virtual doors to a community of creators, inviting them to shape the game world with the very same tools that Bohemia Interactive are using to make the game. It's right there. The scripts, the sounds, the models, all of it's being made in front of our very eyes. The approach Bohemia Interactive are making is to provide a good foundation for their features and design them for expansion by you. Modders can fine-tune every aspect of the game or cater to specific preferences, themes, or even entire overhauls. Whether it's introducing new weapons, vehicles, or dynamic scenarios, the workbench transforms Armory Forger into a canvas where every stroke of creativity becomes a playable reality. Just don't ask too many questions about what this is. The Workbench is a fully featured game development environment similar to Unity that gives you direct access to the engine. 
Conflict, Combat Ops, and Game Master are all products of the Workbench, and it's available for you to create your own overhaul of the game. It's only available on PC, and to find it on Steam, make sure you have tools selected in the filter options for your library, and look for Armor Reforger tools. Once it's installed, you'll be good to go for creating your own scenarios, such as your own version of Conflict, or even a single player experience like Spira. For those just getting started with scenario creation, or want to use a dynamic framework for quickly putting together a dynamic mission, check out the scenario framework. You can find examples for how to set up different missions by opening up the worlds located in Worlds Scenario Framework Samples. If you know how to program, game modes similar to or completely different than Conflict can be created from scratch to fit your own vision, and assets such as new weapons, scopes, or even vehicles can be imported into the workbench. New maps and terrains can also be created entirely with the world editor too, with more popping up on the workshop all the time. And if you'd like to see how these things are made, Bohemia Interactive has created a suite of sample modifications, from complete overhauls like Hexcavate to new game modes like Capture and Hold, all for you to download so you can see how they're put together to gain a better understanding for how things work together in the engine. For more information, check out the modding tutorials and documentation they put together on their Armor Reforger dev hub, link in the description. Will you be the one to create the next big mod for Armor Reforger? And that, my friends, is everything you need to know about how to get the most out of the game. The future of Armor truly is bright, and if you haven't joined us yet, we welcome you to jump on in, because the fight is just getting started. This was Ironbeard, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Oh, check. oh, here we go. Oh, no. <laughs>